back. We're talking to um, Kyle Grief from Focus, and we're talking to Renee Palacios, who is the executive director of Family House. We're talking about this very complicated but important conversation around how the resources that are designed to support those folks who are homeless in this community are actually allocated and the impact on this community if those resources are not allocated appropriately. Bottom line here, we've, we've talked about a lot of issues this morning that, that seem to cross each other in conversation. Give me a bottom line here. What's going to happen if city council says no funding, ESG funding only? Well, I can speak to that because we're right now being recommended for zero. Um, you know, well, is that actually <coughs> true, or are that you being what our recommendation from, was from Black Grant Fund? Absolutely. But you've been given the option to apply for another source of funding. Yes, and we received our ESG funds. Um, you know, the the other thing that's been tricky for us is, you know, as we've gone through the CDBG ESG process, um, you know, we were told there would be enough money in ESG mm -hmm. double that any losses in CDBG could be made up. And when our um, letter came out from the Department of Neighborhoods on our ESG recommendation, we did not receive the money that we lost in CDBG, which for us is $82,000. So right now we're facing a 12% shortfall in our annual budget. So you can see there's a lot of stress, there's a lot of anxiety, um, and you know, our residents are feeling this too. Well, well then I'm, Kyle? Well, and for focus, um, the new directives from the Ohio Department of Development are leaving us with having to put $125,000 on the table for the uh, Homelessness Board to create an application to make sure some of these new activities are, are accomplished. If they're putting, if I have to put that much money on the table, it could very possibly mean that the next time Renee has a family that wants to use focus housing, it, it's just not going to be available. Okay, so but what do you say to the city then who says, look, we just don't have the money? I mean, it, we just don't have the money. Um, again, nobody's entitled to this funding um, as life moves on. Nobody's entitled to this funding. Everybody's getting cut. Um, there are, what, eight proposals now from city council as to how to rectify the situation. So it's not a matter of city council not caring right. about the population. And, right. and I want to be clear about that. I, I think right. that there is Absolutely. some real concern on the part of our elected officials about this population. It's it's a matter of how much money there is left at the end of the month, essentially. Well, and I think that, um, unfortunately, I don't believe that City Council had as much information about all these big funding shifts and philosophical shifts that are taking place as a result of funding streams. Um, I don't think that they were uh, as well aware of the impact of that. I think that's a great point. I would agree with that. Yeah, well, and, and to that. your to your point too, Kyle, I, I'm not sure that the city quite understood either because there was a real lack of communication. Mm -hmm. You know, if I was able to share 12 percent out of bottom line away from Family House, I mean, we're talking about some drastic cuts and, and changes. And yes, rapid rehousing is, is important, but you know, there is there's some serious damage that is going to be due to the shelters if this goes through. But what makes this conversation different than any other conversation where an agency director could go before city council and say, if you take away our money? there's going to be damage to the community. I mean, we, we know that resources for social services um, are shrinking around the country. Right, right. And everyone has that story. So what makes this story different? To me, in my opinion, the difference is $82,000 loss immediately. Um, you know, if this could have been a conversation where it was a gradual transition of funds being changed or a gradual, um, you know, change in uh, the funding patterns, we could absorb that but loss. But you didn't have time to plan. Absolutely, right. we didn't have time to plan. And just, you know, our fiscal year ended on Sunday, so we're actually in a new fiscal year, and I have no idea what our budget is going forward. But you have gotten your ESG money. The authorization, the authorization. has been... Um, voted and approved by City Council. CDBG, on the other hand, is still in flux. And we don't know when a proposal is going to come forth because apparently Council is rejecting the citizens' review process, which um, I think is, is a difficult situation right now. That um, was very politically correct. <laughs> yes. <laughs> very nicely Good stated. Good job, Kyle. Good job. <laughs> um, you are a politician after all. Yes, you are.
Um, but it, it does. It does damage that whole system of, of um, community input. However, um, Senator Edna Brown was at a council meeting and, and, and reminded city council that they didn't have to pay attention to the citizens review um, process at all. The citizens review process is actually a process where um, uh, local citizens review applications for funding and score them and decide right. what amount of um, funding, block grant funding agencies agencies get. So bottom line this for me, somebody, what, what's, what's going to happen if city council doesn't make a decision in the next week? Um, what's going to happen if they don't make a decision? Well, there are going to be a lot of community agencies that are going to be under-resourced. They'll have to start laying people off. They'll have to start shrinking programming. I mean, it, you know, only very large agencies, and we don't have that many large agencies, could sustain that kind of um, uh, cash flow issue for a, a length of time. Mm -hmm. And those are those are all of the agencies that are getting city council uh, block grant money. That's what you're referencing mm -hmm. at that, this point. So we're talking about potentially uh, difficulties in providing services to health care and feeding programs and Absolutely. community development programs right. and which is why this is an important conversation for the community. This is this is one of those where you need to call your city council people, you need to call your mayor and you need to say solve this now. Absolutely. Because the the impact, you no, know, and and I'm not advocating one side or another. That's although right. I do have an opinion, um, <laughs> I am not advocating one side or another. But I am I am saying to you that the impact of this community will, if this issue is not resolved, will be much further reaching and much harder hitting. I think than most people are absolutely having a handle you know, on. At Family House, we've already started cutting hours of our staff. Have you? Um, yes. Um, and, you are the second largest in this in the state. We're the second largest in the state of Ohio for shelter, shelter family for families. Shelter. We have yeah. 90 beds. We have approximately 85 people in the house today, and the majority of the people that we serve are kids. And the average age of a homeless child is four years old. And you've started cutting your hours. And we've started cutting staff hours already, and we're looking at some major other cuts as well, including food. You know, we have the uh, MLK Kitchen in our backyard, so we've thought, you know, maybe we shift the food uh, to MLK, they can feed our folks. Well, is MLK prepared for that? Yeah. Right. So exactly. when you say that That's each right. of us affect the other one, you know, um, I need to call the MLK Kitchen and say, get ready because you'll be feeding more people. Um, so we all affect one another, and if one agency fails or um, struggles with their services, it's going to put more work on the others. Right. Boy, this is a tough one. Yeah. Any light at the end of this tunnel? Well, I think that if we had a view five years in the future, we will have a great system in place. But it is the wrenching and retooling of the system that it is causing so much anxiety right now. Which actually ought to be expected. Right. You know, whenever you're reinventing a system, it's it's difficult right but I think the main piece here is the communication mm -hmm. you know um, I you know talk to us about uh, about what it is that we see every day because um, you know Donnie we're in the trenches I mean Kyle and I are working with uh, folks every day looking sure. into these eyes of these babies absolutely and it's very hard I mean I will tell you personally to go to City Council and, and fight there and then come back and, and look into the eyes of these children that we serve and know that you know, I'm doing the best we can. I'm hoping that our leaders um, can come together and come up with a good solution for them as well. Yeah. Any, um, this is your opportunity to give the city council advice on how to proceed. What would you say to them? I think that um, they should seek uh, expertise about uh, the changes that the HEARTH Act, the federal funding, is uh, going to impose on communities. Learn what that is. Um, learn what the plan and process is going to be so that uh, they can be wiser in how they're looking at the, this issue. Make the best choice possible. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I, I and totally the only way agree. you can make a good choice is to be educated about it. That's right. You're absolutely right. Thank you, ladies, so Thank much. You. This Thank is, you, Danny. This is, we've got so much more to talk to you about regarding um, this conversation, and we will be doing that over the next couple of weeks. So this is not, uh, not the end um, of this particular discussion. Stay with us, please. We'll be right back.